Good morning. Glad you're here today. It's great to see all of you this morning. Hebrews chapters 1 and 2 is, is where we're going to be today. If you'd like to get out a Bible and be turning there. You know, recently I heard a story about a skier that really quite impressed me. Now, personally, I would consider myself to be an adequate, if unadventurous, skier, which by that I mean that I've been enough times to kind of know what I'm doing and and to have fun doing it, but I am certainly not the kind of skier who's looking for a thrill-seeking adventure when I hit the slopes. If I can just kind of whoosh down with some nice turns at a moderate speed, I'm happy. Anything beyond that, I start to get a little nervous. I was skiing with a, a friend once in college, uh, a friend who I learned pretty quickly is a very good skier, uh, and he uh, said, I want to take you down this slope. I, I think you're ready for it. I, I said, okay. So we get on the, the ski lifts, and we start to get going, and pretty quickly, I noticed that it's taking a little longer than it usually does, and I'm not loving that. Uh, And then when we get above the tree line and there are no more trees anymore and we're still climbing, that's when I am officially nervous. And I start to notice things like how few people are on this particular ski lift at this point in time. And then it starts to snow, like really, really starts to snow. And we get off the, the ski lift. I promptly face plant, which proves how ready I am for this. But my friend just takes off going down the mountain. So here I am scrambling to try to get up again, and I'm already feeling a little bit over my head, and I get to my feet just in time to see my friend turn a corner and disappear. And for a moment, I just look around. The snow starts falling a little bit harder. No trees, no people, no friend, thanks a lot. And all I can see in every direction is just white. And I did not like that feeling one bit. It's also why I'm so impressed by the story of this skier. Her name is Danielle Umstead. She recently won a bronze medal in an international skiing competition. She's a very good skier. But what makes this particular skier especially amazing is that at age 13, she lost all vision in her right eye. And then at age 27, she lost vision in her left eye. And now at age 48, she has been skiing for 21 years and representing America in the Paralympics and doing all of that completely unable to see. And doesn't that just totally amaze you? I mean, she is going down some of the hardest slopes in the world. She even does the ones where they have the little flags and you have to weave between them. Some of her top speeds clock out at over 70 miles an hour. And she does all of that without the ability to see. And that just totally blows my mind. And the best part about it for me is actually how and why she is able to do this amazing thing. It's because she has a guide. Actually, in this case, her guide is her husband, who also happens to be an amazing skier. And so when Danielle and her husband go out to the slopes, you can see in this picture maybe that they have these uh, headsets on. You might can see the microphone there, and there are also some built-in headphones so that they can communicate with one another on the slopes. And her husband, Rob, goes out in front of Danelle and calls out instructions to her, like about the different terrain they're on and when she needs to turn and when she needs to slide and when she needs to stop. And it is entirely up to Rob to call out the right instructions and to go out in front of Danielle. And it is entirely up to Danielle to listen to the words of her guide and trust them enough to follow them, even when she cannot see. 
And when I heard that story, I knew that I had to tell it as we take this journey through Hebrews together. Last week, we did begin this new series of lessons that I'm calling a journey through Hebrews. And we talked about how the book of Hebrews really is all about the journey of faith and how to run this journey well, even when the journey is long and difficult. We also talked about how important it is to look to Christ, who is for us like a trailblazing guide going before us on this journey. So that's how we began our series last week. And if you're interested in what's up ahead of us on this journey, I want to say just a quick word about where we're going. I'm dividing this big series up into three little mini-series, three little sections. The middle section is when we're going to talk all about Jesus and what he has done for us and the way that he goes before us like a pioneer of faith, in the words of Hebrews, and blazes the trail that we ought to follow. So that's what we're going to do in the middle section. In the final section, we're going to talk about how we run this journey as strongly as we can. And I want to get really practical with this about some some really practical and applicable things from Hebrews that we can do to help us not just to run the journey, but to actually get stronger with every mile in our journey of faith. But before we get to either one of those things, I think it's important for us in this first section to think about the road itself. The journey itself that we are called to take. And specifically, those things about our journey of faith that can make that journey a difficult one. As Christians, we're trying to walk the walk in a broken and fallen world. And there are going to be challenges that we face when the journey is long and when the road is difficult. Many of those challenges are the kinds that are going to come up within our own hearts. And if we're not careful, they can stunt our progress and slow our journey and even knock us out of the race if we're not paying attention. And so because there are these challenges, and because the journey is long, I think we ought to begin our study of Hebrews by looking at some roadblocks that we may find on the journey of faith. Because the way that we prepare ourselves for these roadblocks can make all the difference in how we complete our journey. By my count, I find at least six of these in the first few chapters of Hebrews And our first one for today, the one we're going to look at this morning, reminds me a whole lot of those two skiers I just told you about, Rob and Danielle. Because the first roadblock on our journey of faith has to do with listening and paying attention to the words of our guide even when we cannot see. Roadblock number one is inattention, inattention to the words of Christ. Let's see what Hebrews has to say about this. Uh, Chapter 2, verse 1 is going to be our key verse for this morning. And really the things that come before it and the things that come after it are going to show us why this verse is so important. So this is what Hebrews chapter 2 says, beginning in verse 1. It says, Therefore... We must pay greater attention to what we have heard so that we do not drift away from it. For if the message declared through angels was valid and uh, every transgression or disobedience received a just penalty, how can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? It was declared at first through the Lord, And it was attested to us by those who heard him, while God added his testimony by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. So notice how that very first verse is calling us to attention. We must pay greater 
attention is the instruction that it gives. And it's actually a very important one for the journey of faith because if we do not pay great attention, we may run the risk of what? We may run the risk, according to verse 1, of drifting away. So you see it right there that inattention can be a roadblock on our journey of faith because if we do not pay attention, it may cause us to slide off course. It may cause us to lose our way. It can cause us to drift. And also, did you notice what it is specifically that we are called to pay great attention to? What is it exactly that if we don't pay attention to it, it, may cause us to drift off course. Verse 1 says that it is what we have heard that you want to pay attention to. And what we have heard in the context of Hebrews are the words of God through Christ. The word of God through Christ is what you have heard, and the word of God through Christ is what deserves our full attention. In fact, some of you may remember that at the very beginning of Hebrews, like chapter 1, verse 1, this book begins by talking about what it is that you have heard. There we read, Hebrews 1, verse 1, long ago God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. That son is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things how? By his powerful word. And when he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. So right there from the beginning... What this author does is remind us of what it is that you have heard. Now remember, this book was written to believers who are on that journey of faith like we are. But for them, the road is getting long. And maybe they're starting to run out of steam. And maybe they're also starting to drift a little bit. And so the very start of Hebrews says, don't forget... God spoke. God spoke to us. And that in and of itself deserves our attention. But it doesn't even stop there. Not only did God speak, but notice the way that he has spoken. At many times and in various ways, he spoke before through prophets even at times through angels. But in these last days, he has spoken to us through Christ, his own son. So what you have heard, in other words, are the words of God through Christ. And that, even more so, deserves our attention Because God, through the words of Christ, created the worlds. And God, by the powerful word of Christ, sustains all living things. And God, through Christ, has made purification for sins in a way that we never before thought possible. And that, Hebrews says, is what you have the privilege to hear. The words of the creator, the sustainer, the redeemer of life itself. That is who has spoken to you. Which is why we ought to pay great attention 
to the words that we have heard. We ought to pay great attention knowing who those words came from and how it is that they came to us. We ought to pay attention to the words of Christ. In fact, you could say that the whole rest of chapter 1 is kind of all about reinforcing that point. It's going to make a bunch of comparisons of Christ to these other beings, including angels, and say Christ is greater than all of these things. And because Christ is greater than all of these things, you really ought to pay attention to what he has to say. And that's what gets us to chapter 2. We must pay greater attention to what you have heard. The words of Christ our Lord, the maker, sustainer, and redeemer of the world. We must pay greater attention so that we do not drift away. For after all, says verse 2 through 4, if God really cared that his people pay attention and not drift from his words before, is he going to care more or less that we pay attention to the words of his own son, to the words of Christ himself? That's kind of the warning that comes right after Chapter 2, verse 1. Chapter 1 has just said that Christ is greater than all other beings. And then verse 2 of chapter 2 says, well, if God really cared that His people follow His words before, it was God's word, it was a valid word, it was a word from God. If He cared then, how much more so does He care that we pay attention to the words of Christ? Because to drift from these words is to neglect the great salvation that he is trying to lead us toward. And that is not what God has in mind for you and for your journey of faith. God desires that we pay attention to the words of Christ because inattention to the words of Christ is going to throw us off course and away from the great salvation that he has in store for us. Does that make sense? Does it make sense why it would be a roadblock in our journey? To not pay attention to the words of Christ? Actually, for me, when you see this argument laid out like Hebrews does, the thing that might not make sense to us is why anyone wouldn't listen to the words of Christ since we know what a great powerful source they come from, and we know how important they really are, why would anyone neglect to pay attention to these words? Well, I think that there is a a reason why, and it's one that we may face. It actually has very little to do with how great the words of Christ are. The reason we might drift from attention has everything to do with our own inability to see. Take a quick look at chapter 2, verse 8, if you would. Now remember, the first two chapters have been lifting up Christ and exalting Him as greater than all other living beings. And He's exalted at the throne of God and everything is under His reign and under His control. And that's what the first half of chapter 2, verse 8 says. Now in putting everything in subjection to Him... He left nothing outside of his control. But the verse doesn't stop there, does it? It may be true that all things are under Christ's control, but at present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him. And there lies the problem. There lies the difficulty in paying attention to the words of Christ. Because in this world in which we live, even though we're told that all things are under Christ's control and that He reigns victorious in heaven at the throne of God, sometimes it's hard to see that. It certainly doesn't always feel like that in the world today. And when we cannot see, 
that Christ is in control, we may be tempted to turn our attention elsewhere. Namely, we may be tempted to turn our attention to those things we can see, like ourselves, and the ways that this world offers us control in our present lives. And because we live and walk on this difficult road, and because we cannot yet see, we may turn our attention away from Christ. We may turn our attention to those things that call to us that we can see instead of the words of our guide who leads us to what we cannot yet see. And that may be the problem that we face. But you know, it doesn't have to be that way. Because even though we may not yet see clearly, that doesn't make Christ any less exalted on high. And actually, the fact that we cannot yet see clearly is really what gives us all the more reason to pay attention to the words of Christ himself. You could say that our journey of faith in Christ is kind of like Danielle Umgard's journey down a ski slope. What Danielle has in her husband is kind of like what we have in Christ and all the more. And I, and I want to close by thinking about that for just a second. Because what Danielle has is a guide who goes before her. And it's also not just any guide either. It's a guide who loves her and who wants what's best for her. I was listening to an interview with her, and she talked about how she probably wouldn't be a skier today if she just had any guide, no matter how skilled they might be, because it just takes so much trust on her part due to the fact that she herself cannot see so she just has to trust so much in the words that she hears. And so she needs to be able to trust that and also to trust the one who gives it to her. She has to be able to trust that the person who goes before her and describes the road ahead and what she needs to do really knows, but also really cares and like really always has her best interests in mind. If she can't trust that, well, then it's going to be hard to go. And you know, even when she trusts that and goes, sometimes she still stumbles and falls. Happened a whole lot at first. Less so now, but still today. She'll try to follow and she'll fall. But you know what she never does? Not once has she ever just turned off her headphones and said, I'm just going to do this myself. I'm going to find my own path. I'm just going to choose my own way. She never does that. Imagine that. She may try to follow the words and stumble, but even when she stumbles, she still trusts that those words are a precious gift and they are, in fact, the best and only way for her to stay the course. So she'd better pay attention to the words that she hears. I would say that our journeys of faith are actually a lot like that. Because we also have a guide that goes before us, and not just any guide, but a guide who loves us and who really cares about what's best for us above all. We also have a guide who knows the terrain and has taken the turns and the difficult steps before us along the way. We also have a guide who sees what we cannot see. But it still takes a lot of trust 
to follow those words of our guide takes a lot of trust when we cannot yet see what he sees. And we will probably stumble and fall from time to time. I know I certainly do. But even when we stumble, and even when we struggle to see, we've still got to realize that the words of our guide are still the best and most precious gift we have for staying the course. And if we tune them out and choose our own way, that's really no way to get where we're going. Maybe today, this lesson encourages you to pay greater attention to the words of Christ. Uh, Perhaps inattention in your life has become a roadblock for you And when it does, it can cause real problems. But those problems can be overcome. And Christ, our guide, still calls out for us to follow his voice if we'll put our trust in him. Maybe someone today needs to answer the voice of Christ and follow him to the waters of baptism to be buried and raised up again in new life and to follow him on that journey towards so great a salvation as he provides. Maybe for some of us, we've fallen down, or we've drifted off course. Maybe you need the help of your church family to help get you back to following in the words of Christ, paying attention to the way he guides us to get where we're going. However you may be called or challenged this morning, let's pay attention to where Christ is leading you while we stand and while we sing.